Christ is in our midst. Today on Wednesday, February 21st, we commemorate St. Eustathios, Bishop of Antioch, St. Timothy the Righteous, St. John III, Patriarch of Constantinople, and St. Zechariah, the Patriarch of Jerusalem. Regarding St. Eustathios, Patriarch of Antioch, St. Eustathios, the great defender of piety and an illustrious opponent of Arianism, was from the Sidi in Pimphilia. He became Bishop of Borea, present-day Aleppo, and in 325 was present at the First Ecumenical Council. From there, he was transferred to the throne of Antioch. But St. Constantine the Great, led astray by the slanders directed against the saint by the Arians, banished him to Trajanopolis in Thrace, where he reposed in 337, according to some. Others say he lived until 360. O God of our fathers, ever dealing with us according to your gentleness, take not your mercy away from us, but by their entreaties guide our life in peace. From St. Peter's First Universal Letter Beloved, since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, arm yourself with the same thought. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer by human passions, but by the will of God. So in other words, when we sacrifice ourselves for other people, when we allow ourselves to suffer for the sake of others, then we are no longer ruled by our passions. We are no longer ruled by earthly things, but by the will of God which is to the betterment of not only ourselves, but everyone. Let that time that is past suffice for doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. Idolatry can mean anything that we're putting something above God, making it into our worship, whether it is television, whether it is the internet, uh, whether it is our job or any other passion. They are surprised that you do not now join them in the same wild prolificacy. And they abuse you, but they will have account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. This is oftentimes when somebody has kicked a habit of alcohol or drugs, and their former friends abuse them and say, well, would you think you're better than us because you don't drink? you think you're better than us because you don't use? This will happen because they are still living in sin. For this is why the gospel was preached, even to the dead, that though judged in the flesh like men, they might live in the spirit like God, meaning that it is possible. It is possible to repent. And they will give an account who is going to judge everyone. So in other words, when someone abuses you, do not think to yourself that you're going to be pushed into uh, doing the old sins again because we will then enter back into the judgment. Everyone will be judged. There will be justice for everyone. So let us walk on that right path. Let us uh, disabuse ourselves of notions that we're going to be able to live however we want, meaning according to the passions, according to the flesh, which is not actually how we want, but the devil basically leading us by the mouth towards sin and destruction. But rather let us take away our passions, live for other people, and therefore fulfill the will of God. From the Gospel according to St. Mark, at that time one of the scribes came up to Jesus. A scribe is a lawyer, someone that has studied the law. Hearing the Sadducees disputing with him, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is the Shem Israel. Uh, this is the declaration of the Jewish people uh, declaring that they are monotheistic, that there is only one God. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, meaning that every aspect of our being must be loving God. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he, meaning that God is one. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbors as oneself, is much more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Meaning that when we actually live a life that is righteous, doing these things, this is more powerful than a sacrifice. This is more powerful than a whole burnt offering, where we're almost trying to treat it like a magical ceremony. 
this is meaning that we are supposed to have ourselves be contrite. This is why St. David says in the Psalm 50, a crushed and humbled heart you will not despise. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared ask him any question. And as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, how can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, inspired by the Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? And the great thong heard him gladly. Now this is to show us that not everyone that came to Jesus Christ that was from the scribes and the Pharisees, or even the Sadducees, uh, were malicious and did not, not want to learn. So this scribe in particular actually desired to hear the truth. He saw how Jesus Christ answered those that were trying to shame him, those that were trying to hurt him, and asked a legitimate question. And again, this wasn't to necessarily test Jesus, but more to ratify himself. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And when Jesus Christ answered these things correctly, and he saw that, yes, this is true, Jesus Christ then turns it on him and says, you're not far from heaven. That is the way we ought to live. So we see again that he is showing himself to be who he is, the real Lord. David said, the Lord said to my Lord. Now, a king does not look to his son or his heir as the Lord. You're not going to see them putting them higher than themselves. They are Lord over them because of the natural succession. So Jesus Christ, by being the Lord over the Lord, meaning David, shows himself not to be his son, even though he is of the lineage. This is to show that Jesus Christ, his divinity, is before. This is much like when John the Baptist says, he is before me, he is greater than me because he came before me, even though John the Baptist uh, was born before Christ. But he is showing the, etern the eternity of God, that God exists before the cosmos. I hope that you've enjoyed today's Spiritual Calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.